Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's County Commission meeting. Public notice was disseminated for today's meeting. The San Miguel County Board of Commissioners will hold a regular meeting on Tuesday, August 13, 2019, beginning at 2 p.m. at the San Miguel County Administration Complex, located at 500 West National Avenue, Suite 200, Las Vegas, New Mexico, 87701. During the meeting, a County Board of Finance meeting will take place. Notice to people with disabilities. If you're an individual with a disability who is in need of a reader, amplifier, qualified sign language interpreter, or any form of auxiliary aid or service to attend or participate in the hearing or meeting, please contact the San Miguel County Manager's Office at 505-425-9333 at least one week prior to the meeting or as soon as possible. Public documents, including the agenda, and minutes can be provided in various accessible formats. Please contact the Commission Administrator at either of the above numbers if a summary or other type of accessible format is needed. This notice was published at the, on the Las Vegas Daily Optic on July 28, 2019. The notice was published on the San Miguel County website at www.co.sanmiguel.nm.us on July 24, 2019. At least 72 hours in advance of the meeting, the following agenda for today's meeting was posted and available for public inspection on the San Miguel County website at www.co.sanmiguel.nm.us and also available in hard copy at the office of the San Miguel County Manager. Agenda for today. Call to order. Roll call, please. Madam Chair, Maria Martinez. Here. Vice Chair, Harold Garcia. Here. Uh, Commissioner Janice Varela. Present. Commissioner Max Trujillo. Here. And Commissioner Chris Nahan. Here. A quorum has been established. Commissioner Trujillo, can you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Agenda. I have had a request made to table item number 14. Do I have a motion to table item 14? That's it. Madam Chair, to motion by Commissioner Nahar. Second. Second by Commissioner Trujillo. All those in favor? All right. All right. Motion carries. Agenda as as changes made. So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Motion by Commissioner Trujillo. Second by Commissioner Varela. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Excuse me, Madam Chair. I have a question from the audience to see if there's any way we can turn up the volume a little bit. Can everybody hear me? Approval of the minutes for July 9th, 2019 regular meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved, Madam Chair. Motion by Commissioner Trujillo. Second. Second by Commissioner Nahar. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public input. Before we move into public input, 
I am asking individuals that are here to speak on behalf of the roadblock that if you can hold your thoughts in your till we get to that item on the agenda um, so that we can hear it before it is presented. Can I have Mr. Manuel Aragon please come to the podium and identify yourself? Oh, so you're going to be presenting on the Varias Road. Yeah, so when we come to that item, I apologize. Okay. So it'll be, it'll be that one, that one. So Shannon Risk. Podium, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Sharon Risk, and I am in the process of completing construction of a new home in Pecos in the development called Birds of a Feather. And I wanted to mention to you just briefly, I'm aware that there are a number of professionals who conduct some business. Uh, this is relative to item number 20, by the way, the monopole in Pecos. I'm aware there are a number of individuals in the development who conduct some business from home offices and find uh, internet and electronic communication extremely valuable. And for me personally, um, my clients, my patients, uh, sometimes need to reach me rather quickly and it is a mental health issue and it is also at times a life and death issue for some of my clients. So I'm very pleased that you are considering the monopole to improve communication. Thank you. Thank you. Manuel Garcia, please when you get to the podium if you can identify yourself. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, Manuel Garcia here. I've got a couple of uh, topics. I've been talking about uh, solid waste and specifically recycling. And uh, about two weeks ago, there's a, a company that's now using uh, recycled plastic bottles uh, to make shoes. It's, that company makes uh, women's shoes. So uh, also, there is money and profit to be made from recycled plastic bottles. That's why I'm mentioning it. So people can make money. Uh, you can make lumber, plastic lumber out of it. Uh, you can buy that lumber at uh, lumber stores. You can buy plastic furniture. And even Adidas is making some of their shoes out of uh, recycled plastic bottles. And there's another company called uh, Excuse, so, me, excuse so, me, Mr. Garcia. So Can you guys hear him back there? No. So is the mic on? The mic is not on. Is it? That's better. Okay. okay, I'll get closer. So recycling. Okay, the, the next topic is, is roads. Somebody had dropped some concrete on the C-53A road near the 104 Highway C-53 intersection, and they've cleared that off already. They're working on the road over there. So. As I've mentioned before, that roads should not be vacated if access is needed on the road, whether by only one individual or multiple individuals, and you guys are considering road vacations, or if you may be considering road vacations. If the road must be vacated, the county should make sure that a right-of-way or easement remains and make that clear to all in the area. And I want to let you know that there is currently an investigation through the office of Representative Ben Ray Lujan in the governor's office about the unlawful vacation of the C-53B road. It is my understanding that uh, Chairman uh, 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 Maria Martinez has already been uh, contacted and uh, County Manager Vidal Martinez has also already been contacted. Included in the investigation is the issue of the bridge that uh, falls under federal guidelines. And included in the uh, investigation is the issue where San Miguel County failed to proceed with the community's petition to place the C-53 road back onto the road logs. That petition was submitted in 2018, and I did file a tort claim notice on that issue. So just wanted to let you know that 
those issues are on the table. I, uh, probably uh, the rest of the commissioners didn't know, so I wanted to notify the rest of the commissioners what's uh, coming down the pike on those issues. So uh, let's recycle, let's make some shoes. <laughs> There's uh, another company that's making some uh, luggage and some backpacks. So some people can find ways to make money even out of recycled plastic bottles. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Garcia. Next, if we can have Kelly Goldsmith. Madam Chair, let me just address this last issue. I wanted to state for the record that I have not been contacted as a county attorney of any questions or investigation uh, by the Attorney General's office or any office regarding the county's practices on the particular role he mentioned. This is an old issue which has been litigated in court and the court has ruled against Mr. Garcia. But I'm telling everybody, there is no such uh, uh, investigation or discussion that has come to my office. Ms. Kelly. Good afternoon, thank you. My name is Kelly Goldsmith. I am a resident of Conscious, New Mexico, San Miguel County. And we were here a year ago, and we asked for help because of a herbicide application that was damaging. We're here again asking for help. We got a, a tremendous amount of help, and I thank you for that. But it didn't change anything. We're here again. Our biggest ploy is we are in the county, and we have the New Mexico Department of Transportation goes through our community once a month and sprays weeds. They spray at our houses, they spray at our businesses. We also have crop dusters. We're surrounded by ranchers. We can't, we can't control them, but we do need some control over the Department of Transportation. The paperwork that I gave you is their schedule, and it shows the dates and where they spray. They spray historical markers, they spray rest areas, up by Springer, they spray bare ground. On the far side over here, I highlighted the chemicals that they use, the herbicides that they use. Everybody's upset about Roundup and glyphosate. And I'm going to tell everybody here and in the audience, Roundup and glyphosate is dangerous, but it's a glass of juice compared to what they're spraying on our roads all through the state of New Mexico. This schedule is just a part of the Trementina. We're out of the Trementina office. Any of you can go on your website and you can find out what herbicides are sprayed right in your front yard. And guess what? They're not going to tell you. There's a sign up that says when they're mowing, but there's never a sign saying when they're spraying. It's a lot of tax money. I'm a taxpayer and I am extremely opposed to this. I'm pretty sure I didn't vote to say I want my hard-earned money to go to poison me. I don't want my hard-earned money to go to poison you, our water, or the animals. Now this, this herbicide application on our roadside is out of control. All you have to do is sit down and look at this vegetation management schedule from the Department of Transportation and you will understand what I'm talking about. I've got a notebook right here. These are the safety data sheets on the chemicals that the Department of Transportation has access to. This is what New Mexico roads are sprayed with. We need help. We are asking the county to help us with ordinances to put an end to this. The Department of Transportation, after several conversations with them and getting told this and actually being lied to, they, they, they manage themselves. So if you can help us, as our county representatives, because we don't have a mayor, we have the county. We are asking you to help us with ordinances. Find an ordinance that protects us or help us write an ordinance that protects us. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Seaborn. Anna Seaborn. I'm following the same topic as Kelly. 
We are urgently imploring you to please help us to stop New Mexico Department of Transportation highway herbicides applications in San Miguel County. We're appealing to you, please create or enforce a county ordinance that will send only mowers a few times each growing season instead of sending us and our environments those monthly doses of herbicides and mixtures, recipes of destruction for humans, pets, wildlife, grass, landscape plantings, fruit trees, golf course, and vegetable gardens. San Miguel de County Commissioners were informed last fall that sending the roadside herbicide sprays is a toxic and expensive way to control the weeds along the highway. The county commissioners were informed that sending roadside mowers an additional time or two per season would be a wise and non-toxic alternative to creating further chemical assaults on our air, soil, and water. A valid point was made that the herbicides repeatedly spraying along the same stretches of highways in the spring, summer, and fall is a waste of tax money, yours and mine. These roadside herbicide sprayings go right across our conscious community, right through many other communities in San Miguel County. We get sicker just driving to the post office or to the convenience store or to the gas pump in our community as well as traveling to go shopping or to doctors in Las Vegas or to go, go and take care of business with county government. Recent U.S. lawsuit settlements have established health hazards including lymphatic cancers caused by the use of glyphosate which is an ingredient in numerous plant killer mixtures such as Roundup and Rodeo that are being applied to our highway roadsides. We've learned that our municipal tap water tests have historically and consistently revealed substantial contamination levels of glyphosate and dozens of other pesticides, including Agent Orange, that have been applied for many years near Conscious Lake, which is the sole source of our municipal water supply. Conscious community is a mixture of retirement and vacation properties and young families. Roadside herbicides applications have occurred in May, June, July, and August this year, and more applications will be scheduled for this same stretch of Highway 104 through this fall. Starting in May, I and numerous other Conscious Dam residents and vacationers, many folks suffering from merely driving along parts of Highway 104 that were sprayed, are again experiencing increased flare-ups of herbicide toxicity, distress, and pain. These are the same pathetic miseries that erupted during the <clears throat> six months of spray season last year. That's a long time to suffer acutely, and that's an even longer time to suffer lingering symptoms all the rest of 2018, right through to the present time from the herbicides in the air, in the soil, and the tap water. Our Community Health Toxicity Symptoms Questionnaire runs to four pages, including numerous specific symptoms under six categories respiratory, immune, neurological, digestive, bone and muscle, endocrine, hormonal disturbances. Two of our doctors commented that they have seen an alarming increase in kidney and liver disease distresses in their conscious patients ever since the spring started in May 2018. Thank you, Ms. Seaborn. Next, we have Barbara Gibbs, and I want to remind you that we only have three minutes for public input per person. If you can please stick to your time. Thank you. My name's, my name's Barbara Gibbs. Hi. Hello. I also live out in Conscious, and I'm here about the herbicide spraying. 
Um, I do twice a week, I'm required to be on the road. Go into town, drop off our mail, we have a home-based business. And uh, we do a lot of internet um, sales. Um, we have three dogs. I, well, I moved there 10 years ago uh, at, when I was battling cancer. And um, I'm facing that again now as a victim and it's raining down on me. Uh, I live in a valley that is off the beaten track, so the helicopters, the planes, where there's three, you know, it's uh, poison, and it's being dumped on us. Um, it's all been, so been, been dumped on the county roads out there. And, uh, you know, anybody knows, I'm a retired RN, you would drive through that dust that's got poison on it, and it goes up in the air with the dust. And then, inadvertently, you stop for a cow, and that dust catches up with you. Um, I'm personally fed up with it. Um, I don't think it should happen, spraying the road, spraying anywhere. And if it's coming out of the sky, it's getting on everything in the earth. I have animals that live out there. My neighbors are sick. My boyfriend is sick. When they have to go to town, they feel ill the next day. Um, I'm disgusted with it. I have an infection in my lung that's not cancerous, but it's, it, there's something there. And I'm going, to pers I'm going to pursue this, and I will go after the responsible parties. I don't think it's the county, but I know you can help us, and I'm begging you to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mark Partage. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I came here last year. I came here to speak for the land, for the animals, the birds, and the people against the atrocities of poison. You see this thing on my nose? The same thing that was here last year. It's still here. I'm still fighting it. Problem is, is I'm having a harder time because they're using the same chemicals that caused this mutation for the last month. I've had crop dusters flying over the top of my trailer when I walk out the front door. I can smell the exhaust and the chemicals from the plane. How would you feel? If you had a crop duster flying over your house and you walked out the front door and you could smell the exhaust from the airplane. I got peaches on my trees for the first time in four years and now they're all contaminated. I'm afraid to eat them. I've got squash plants in my garden. I've got tomato plants. I'm afraid to eat them too. I had the De New Mexico Department of Agriculture come take samples off my trees because they started dying from the poison. The fruit drying up on the limbs, the leaves turning brown, turning yellow from chlorosis. This stuff has been sprayed on the lake shore. Five years in a row they did Conchas Lake. They sprayed the Canadian River for 16 years with poisons. All of that poison went into our drinking water. And not only did it go into our drinking water, but it's caused health problems. I can't smell the food that my girlfriend cooks. I can't taste the food that my girlfriend cooks. How in the hell are the animals supposed to find their food if they can't smell or taste? If I can't smell or taste, how are the, how are the lions supposed to smell or taste? How are the birds supposed to find their way. I've been dizzy every single day since I got sprayed by the crop duster on Highway 104 last year. That's over a year. Imagine being dizzy for 300 and over 365 days. Two of the chemicals that I got contaminated with, I have to wait two more years to find out if I get cancer from them because I didn't get treated within 48 hours. It took me three months to find out the names of the chemicals. These people who are spraying these chemicals, they don't even have to tell you what they're using. And for your own information, if you get sprayed by a crop duster or you get poisoned, you need to call the New Mexico Department of Agriculture. I've got 10 seconds. I don't know what to say. I, I, I spoke my heart last year. I've been trying to think of something to say to people to make a difference, to make somebody care. These poisons, what if you got to change a tire on the side of the road? 
What if your kids have to get out and use the bathroom or your pets have to use the bathroom? You're going to have to get down in that stuff that they're spraying on the sides of the road. And between the state highway department and the airplanes, and you combine all that stuff together, God only knows what the heck it is. Thank you for your time, and I'm sorry if I've got a little emotional. But I think emotional, this, I think this situation called for emotion. Thank you. Molly Small. Smollett and uh, I'm from the Committee for Clean Water, Air and Earth as Mark and Kelly are. Um, the same group that fought fracking a few years ago and you all put regulations in to stop it. Now we have an urgent, urgent problem as Mark and Kelly have uh, reiterated. I am sure there's not a person in this room that doesn't know someone who has cancer or has died from cancer. So we can say without a doubt, there is a cancer epidemic in our country. And a large contributing cause is Roundup, brought to you by Monsanto. Glyphosate and other poisonous chemicals in Roundup are being used all over our country. More than 26 million pounds of Roundup are spread on American, America's school grounds, public playgrounds, along highways, and people's gardens. Right here in Las Vegas, too many people are using it in their yards to kill the weeds. They do not realize that they and their children and their neighbors and their pets are all being exposed to this dangerous poison. Our committee just found out that Grand Avenue and Mills was sprayed with Roundup, plus Trump.